All right. Hey guys, we're back with another episode of Chit Chats. We've got Michaela and myself. Um, and something Michaela and I were talking about, and actually as a team, we've been talking about a lot is how social media is really transitioning to something that is, well, not social media, right? So, I mean, look at looking at the news, you, you pretty much can't escape everything that's been happening. All the new features that are launching, the creator economy is um, you know, at the top of, the, of every single news piece. And I think it's just so interesting to go back a few years and think about social media was literally to connect with people, to be social. That was the whole premise of what Facebook was founded on. But you fast forward now, and we're doing all sorts of things on social media that aren't just talking to one another, right? Um, I think Instagram, Instagram has come out saying they're going to be a full video um, mm -hmm. app. TikTok's the number one self-proclaimed number one entertainment app in the app store. And I don't know about you, Michaela, but I literally don't know how to find anything these days without going on Instagram. No, I mean, we're seeing such a shift of these platforms. And like you're saying, we don't even know what to call them anymore. It feels right. almost wrong to call them social media platforms, especially now with them being so e-commerce and shopping centric. Yeah, absolutely. And I actually, we're going to um, drop a podcast, I think on this in, in the next week or so, but I had Rashad Tabakawala on, who is an author of a brand new book. Um, and he was actually, he coined the phrase, the mongrelization of media, which I thought was mm -hmm. actually kind of interesting, but we were talking a lot about this exact same thing, how it used to be that, you know, when you were advertising, you had a whole strategy, you had something for Google, you had something for images, you had something for e-commerce, you had something for video, um, and then for social media. But now all of a sudden, all of those things are really come into one, right? Mm -hmm. And Instagram is an e-commerce platform. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it that, is. that is 100% what it is, but it's also social. Uh, it's also video. It's also photo. Um, so it's really, it's really sort of interesting to see how all of this has, um, has come about. Yeah, it is. And I know you were saying that Instagram came out and said they're going to be really video centric. And what they said was they're going to focus on their creators. They're going to focus on video. They're going to focus on messaging and shopping. And I think it's just, it's so interesting to see these platforms be pushing to be a shopping platform. And I feel like it's almost forcing brands to either adapt to this model or, or die. Like I, yeah. I don't really find myself a lot of the time going to a brand's website to look for a product. I'm finding it on social. Absolutely. Actually, that's, it's so interesting you say that because another one of our podcast guests, actually Ruggable, um, I was just looking on their site the other day to try to find a rug um, for my house because I've got, you know, two kids and I've got a dog and it just, <laughs> the, the message of Ruggable speaks to me, washable rug's great, right? So I was on there and I was like, you know what, I, this is overwhelming for me. And I just went to their Instagram page and I shopped that and made a purchase yeah. and it was, it was seamless. It was so much easier. I felt like um, someone had kind of curated the experience that I was already going for. So yeah, and it's interesting. It's interesting to see that it's it's not just Instagram, right? It's TikTok, yeah. it's Snapchat, it's YouTube. All of these platforms are focusing on shoppable features and integrating ways for brands to be shoppable on their platforms. And I think it's really all about brands meeting the consumers where they are. Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, if you look at how, like how have websites really changed in the last 10 years? I mean, not really much at all. Right. But look at, look at Instagram, look at Facebook, look at, you know, Snapchat, TikTok and TikTok that wasn't even around. Um, look at how many features these guys are coming out with. I mean, I feel like you and I, our entire job is to keep up with what's happening mm -hmm. in the social space. And even then it can be a little overwhelming just because things are coming at us left and right all the time. So when you look 100%. at that sort of ad adaptation of consumer experience, it makes a lot of sense. And besides, I, I think when I go on a website, I have a hard time sort of envisioning what this product is, right? That, that to me has mm -hmm. been the biggest missing piece going from like a brick and mortar to an e-commerce sort of right. authority online buying, I guess, uh, approach, if you will. But social media solves that for me, right? If I see someone like actually using the product in a live, in an Instagram story, on TikTok, in some sort of video where it's actually feels yeah. like it's alive and organic, way easier for me to purchase. No question. It's the difference between looking at a highly produced product shot of you know, of, for your, in your example, a rug by itself yep. to it integrated into someone's life, them telling you how they're using it, why they bought it, how they're decor decorating, you know, or interior design basing off of it. It's a whole different experience for the buyer. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's, 
I think it's smart. And I mean, we're, we're not the only ones, right? If you look at the numbers, um, I think his eMarketer just came out and said they had a study that was, let me see here, um, U.S. social commerce for this year is expected to be up almost 36% over last year. Mm -hmm. And I think from 2019 to 2020, it was up almost 40%. So, um, yeah. and even it's expected to be like 70, almost 76 billion in 2025, I think. Um, so That's we're not crazy. the only ones. And it's not like the U.S. is the only place that's doing this either, right? China has been, as they, they always are, light years ahead of us. I mean, we had, actually, I think one of the first TikToks I did for um, our company TikTok page was about WeChat and yeah. the WeChat Minis experience. I mean, that was a $250 billion um, market, or sorry, revenue line yeah. item for WeChat in 2019. And that 2019, we really had barely even skimmed that surface. So you think about yeah. like WeChat is effectively, I, I think, I think we're seeing our social platforms kind of come together the way that WeChat has been. Like WeChat is a one-stop shop. It's social, it's e-commerce, it's entertainment, it's all the things. Um, and I think it's a little different in the US because we do have so many platforms here. Um, but TikTok is creeping up there. And I think Facebook yeah. is making some big plays as well. Uh, so it's gonna be it's going to be interesting to see how, see who sort of wins, or if we kind of continue to have this diversified approach yeah. to online media and entertainment. Yeah, I think it's interesting right now because I think the platforms are so divided by their audiences and what, you know, what age of people are using those platforms, right? And I wonder too if, you know, we're going to kind of have a coming together right. of platforms, or if we're going to, like you said, just see them stay separate. I'm, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. Yeah, me too. I mean, I think if you look at the last year and a half, I mean, TikTok exploded. You had Clubhouse. Um, you know, Spotify is doing big things in the podcast and the audio mm -hmm. world as well. So it, we continue to sort of add more, <laughs> more things on to our online world, right? Yeah. To me, this is almost all about how how we as human beings are transitioning from living in the real world to the online world. Um, a digital world. And I think augmented reality is, is a big driver of a lot of that, but it does yeah. make things pretty easy. I have to say. It does. It does. And I think a lot of this was propelled over the past year and a half by the pandemic, right? Like we, yeah. this was, this was inevitable, but I think it was pushed to evolve a lot quicker because we're all absolutely online. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you think about how brands can sort of take advantage of this trend, uh, to me, it's obvious that you need to um, you need to have a robust social media following if you do not mm -hmm. already. And you can look at how you can build a community there. You can do tips and FAQs. You have endless amounts of influencer partnerships, both at the macro and the micro level. Um, that's going to speak to people in a lot different way. And we've seen an absolute influx of people, I would say in the last two years, come to us saying, hey, we need a micro influencer strategy where we can get some, you know, awareness out of it, but we really need that mm -hmm. content because that content is what is resonating on social platforms, not the stuff that our in-house creative team is doing. So right. I think, you know, exploring that micro influencer strategy is going to be super important, making sure you've got a really solid handle on your customer experience on Instagram and kind of how you're getting your mm -hmm. awareness out. Um, those would be probably my two big, my two biggest, and then and keep, a, keep a very close eye on TikTok, right? Yeah, um, there's there's no question that that is that's where it's at. I mean, anything, I would agree with all of that. that. <laughs> would you add anything to that? No, I wouldn't add anything to it. I think those are all really good, solid points. I think I think it's interesting to think about these platforms moving to be so e-commerce centric. the The groundwork is there, right? Influencer marketing is something that is going to be essential to e-commerce on these platforms. So I think just having a really strong strategy, knowing that it works, testing and trying new things, that's all gonna be really important to making sure that your brand can sell well yeah. on these platforms. That's definitely true. And that's that's why the social standard is here, right? To help, help you is. figure out the new things and, and test everything, see what's working, see what's not. Um, yeah. You gotta get, gotta get influencers, gotta get social. That's pretty much the, the only path forward as far as I can tell. It is. <laughs> awesome.